Magenta, I have a question for you. I asked my guides recently about a particular spiritual teacher and channel the other day and about the information they are bringing forward. My guides replied with one word, and that word was flawed. Do you have any idea what this might mean? Here is my reply. Before I respond to this question, I just want to clarify that I am not referring to any particular channel or spiritual teacher, and I am speaking generally. So if you received the word flawed, the message flawed from your guidance system, then it could mean one of two scenarios. Number one, the entire message is flawed as in the person is not really channeling and everything they're saying is distorted. Or two, part of the message, not all of it is flawed as in incorrect or distorted or interpreted upon a false premise or a misunderstanding. Given the level of channeling that's out there today, then I would say it is far more likely that it's the second scenario that your guides refer to, that part of the message, not all of it, is flawed, which makes it all the more of a challenge to work with this kind of material, as it will be up to you, the seeker, to discern accuracy from distortion. One way to work with this kind of material is to be within universal gratitude for the challenge for your discernment skills to be optimized. That's what you do first of all, move into that gratitude. And when you have done that, it's worth bearing in mind if this flawed material is just distorted, as in simply incorrect, or is it dangerous, as in, are there inverted codes within the flawed material? Now, if it's the second of the two, then you will be reading material that is accurate with aligned codes mixed with distorted inverted codes. And you will need all your spiritual and psychic faculties in place if you decide to work with this material. Constructing a filter system similar to the black flame filter for healing work, but instead for information, constructing a filter system within your own fields, your own energy system, your matrix will be needed. If you read my book, The Black Box Program and The Rose Gold Flame as Antidote, then the sigil work in that book also works as the filter system I'm referencing. However, there are several different ways to do this and you may invent your own unique method. So the sigil referenced within this material is the triquetra and you can use that as the focus for your filter system. You would look at this sigil, the triquetra, before beginning any of this work, before you deep dive into this partly flawed material. You can wear jewelry depicting the triquetra if you wish. Some people have had tattoos of the sigil they work with. And if you've had that kind of mark tattooed on your body, then you already have your filter system installed, especially when you become aware of it. And there are other methods also, such as visualizing a literal filter system around you filtering in all the aligned light crystalline codes and filtering out the distortion and the inverted codes. Having artwork depicting this kind of scene would be helpful as having an actual visual around you holds so much more strength and power. So artists have an advantage here because they can draw their own filter system that works for them or paint their own filter system or if you know someone who is an artist, you describe to them what you are seeing in your fields as a filter system, and they can paint or draw that for you. So it doesn't have to be the triquetra. That's just one really aligned symbol 
but there are multiple different ways of working with these powerful sigils, visuals. So it's up to you to choose which one feels right to you and which one feels most aligned and most powerful, creating that shield around you and giving you that filter system. And crystals as well, they can also assist with filtering. So crystals that are indigo blue in color or violet or turquoise, so colors in that spectrum, the dark blue into the turquoise, into the violet and amethyst, purple, dark blue, purple, turquoise, that color spectrum, they really assist with filtering. Organite can also work this way, especially if you have acquired organite specifically for this job or you have created organite yourself specifically as a filter. Crystal skulls can do the same thing, but all crystals are more suited to bringing forward your own messages and amplification or shielding of your own energy and healing. So the sigil work is very much in alignment with this filter system. It's like a firewall that you are looking for, but trust your intuition and your gut feeling on how to work with this filter system and how to create this filter system that's most aligned for you. Now you will want to filter out distorted information and inverted codes while retaining the accurate knowledge. And the sigils work as filters because they are powerful visionary flame letters and you will need visual codes to act as that filter. Because you are working with the pineal gland when you use the sigil, it's like placing up a firewall and you control the settings as to what comes through that firewall. Now, once you have that filter in place, and this may take time to establish, once you have that filter in place, then you are ready to work with the material. You can continue to ask your guides to assist you, but the fact that they've given you one word, flawed, suggests it's important for you to create this discernment, inner strength and sovereignty yourself. So I would say that would go for anyone working with this kind of material. It's important for all of us to create this discernment, inner strength and sovereignty ourselves. And the guidance system is there for that reason, just to guide us. They're teaching us to do this ourselves. So the work you do here will become energetically systemic. As in, if you are sovereign in one area, so too will you be so in all areas. Therefore, infiltration cannot occur against your will. My first book, Masters of the Matrix, gives energetic codes for systemic sovereignty. So if you need more focus there, then this is the book that I would recommend. Now, knowing you have guidance around you, yet operating this filter system yourself is the way forward. So you work with the guidance, but you take it from you, as in you are in the driving seat. So you would read this material in small chunks, just a few pages at a time, or even paragraphs at a time, and hold the thought that whilst you are taking note of what is said, you are also taking each word, each teaching, and each concept with a pinch of salt, if you will. And then, when you have done that, you go into meditation, or if it's last thing at night, you go to sleep with conscious intention for dream work to take place. Note then the information presented within the dream or the meditation. When you come out of meditation or when you wake up, note the information presented. Write it down if need be. This is the filtered, truthful and accurate knowledge recycled and represented to you in a safe, crystalline, aligned form for your own teaching and awareness. 
Now, for an adept on this path, you will most likely pick this up with the very first meditation and the very first dream work that you consciously align with, specific to this work. If you're a beginner, A, I would suggest you think about whether you're ready to work at this level. Uh, and if you decide that you are and you do want to do that, then it may be that it doesn't happen straight away the first time you go into meditation or the first time you work consciously with dream work. And you will know because there will be something within that meditation or that dream work that connects with the material you're reading. Something. And if that is there, then the entire dream or the majority of the dream or the majority of the meditation is giving you that filtered, truthful and accurate knowledge that you've bought through the filter. And it comes through in your own unique way, in the way that your third dimensional brain interprets and in the way that you understand it's unique to you. Now, if there's nothing at all in your dream that you remember or in your meditation that's related in any way to that book, even if it's one object, one word, one, co one color, if there's nothing there, then do the work again the next night or the next time you meditate. Eventually, it will occur for you. But if you are further along in your spiritual journey and you're not a beginner, then it's very likely this will occur straight away for you because you'll have been working with conscious intention already and that is something that is already in place for you. So when you take that intention, you create the response to it. So when it comes to beginners, I do feel that this work may be simply too deep and too complex for beginners who have only just begun their spiritual awakening. I would suggest you look at more simple texts that are full of light and do not hold distorted codes. And if you aren't able to tell, then ask a spiritual um, individual, spiritual friend or teacher or someone you trust about what material you should start with. Um, for those who are more adept, for initiates upon the spiritual path, who've walked this path for a long time and have acquired the skills needed for this kind of discipline and focus, then this work can be done and it can bring great rewards. The filter, however, must be in place before the work is undertaken. That is crucial. You must get your filter in place before you begin. And then really you need to ask yourself, is this material worth this level of filtering or not? And only you as the reader, the listener, the seeker can decide that. If you decide, well, yes, there's really important teaching here mixed with flawed material, but I want to know what that information is. I can feel that it's there. If that's your decision, then go ahead and embark on this journey and it will be well worth it if you get that filter system in place. Now, if along the way in this journey, in this work, that you experience any discomfort physically, mentally, emotionally or spiritually, then stop the work, recalibrate and return to it at a later date when you are back in balance and you are strong. Do not undertake this work if you are unwell or emotionally upset or angry or hold any other negative emotion. Trepidation and caution are fine, but fear must be integrated first before undertaking this work. So I hope that clarifies and answers your question. Thank you so much for listening. Bye.